Welcome to the Brand Clarity Podcast, hosted by Visions to Images and Susie Libertor. The Brand Clarity Podcast highlights several different topics, including entrepreneurship, franchises, and digital marketing trends. Visions to Images helps corporations and franchises with their branding, website, paid advertising, and digital marketing. Hello, everybody. Today on the podcast, I have Tide McBride, founder of Preservin, um, and he is a franchisor, franchisee, all of the good stuff, really looking to develop and grow his um, company that's amazing. So I'm happy to have him on. Ty, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, so I'm Ty. I'm the founder of Preservin. Preservin is a home service business that does wood rot repair. We use a an epoxy so that people can repair and not have to replace. So it's an environmentally friendly option. It's a low cost, affordable option. And it's a really great small business for our franchisees. Love it. Short and sweet to the point. I love it. So we were talking um, and I'm kind of getting things under my skin and trying to figure out, you know, where, where we need to start. So tell me like, who is your ideal customer? Like who buys from you B2C? Yeah, you know, we always say in our kind of marketing and brand strategy that it's lakes, gates, and uh, golf courses. Like, so folks that uh, have a property that's on a lake uh, or is behind a gate, you know, gated communities or, or like I said, golf courses, those are kind of our, our ideal, we call them neighbors, not customers. Those are our ideal neighbors. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of community they live in. And those are the kind of individuals we're trying to like uh, introduce our services to because a lot of times... They're not even aware that a service like us exists. Sure. So how did you come to the ideal customers? I know so many times, even myself, I've gone through so many ideal clientele. Like I'm always changing them. And now I feel like we finally got it under our skin. How did you arrive at yours? Well, I'll have to say mine is probably a little bit more guerrilla style than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I I just grew up in the home repair business. And Mm -hmm. so mine was really about, I just physically spent time in these communities and understanding the individuals who were likely to appreciate our services to have, have the needs of, of rot repair. And so I always tell people like, when I, when I talk to my franchisees, I tell them to like fall in love with their city and really get to understand it on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis. And we even talked to our franchisees about carving out 10 top neighborhoods that they're going to target. And this is through both uh, traditional, you know, whether that's uh, direct mail and, and Mm -hmm. canvassing and also digital, but we try to carve out our top 10 neighborhoods that kind of fit within the ideal and we kind of grow it out from there. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of old school. Like I just get it, get in my truck and drive around and try to understand that's how I used to do it. Now I understand it more from a from a macro sense, but that's kind of how I got started understanding. I love it. I think, and here's kind of where we came into the franchise industry as an agency as well, is during COVID, that was like a huge t- turning point for us as a, as a company and for many is because what was happening is people were on Facebook groups saying, hey, I want to support somebody locally owned, but not a franchise because they have money. Yeah. And we're like, no, yeah. they, don't, they don't have money. They're still locally owned. <laughs> right. And I, I, I think that there's this stereotype that kind of needs to be broken in that sense, because I mean, there's so many franchises all around me every day I pass them and I'm like, oh, they're locally owned and operated, but people don't see it as that. So I love that you talk about like being with the local marketing, local community, be, fall in love with the city. I mean, that's huge and important because that's going to really outperform anything, any other marketing. If you're in your area and your community and you're you're involved and you're giving back and you're showing up, like that's going to work no matter what. I know, um, and this, my B2C is more B2B, but I'll, but I'll kind of tell you, you know, we used to do chamber networks. We used to do, yeah. I mean, just getting into those types of things and building those referral lists as well of like insurance agents and all of these different people. That is huge. And and I mean, direct mail can work efficiently and or if you're driving around, right? So there's plenty of right. to work around that. And of course, then there's the digital ads, of course. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's, it's so critical, I think, you know, and, and networking and building community can happen both in the, in the real space, uh, mm-hmm. like you're talking about, like those chamber meetings and those different things. And it happens in the digital space, being oh, involved 
And, you know, and I talk to our franchisees about this as well, about growing your footprint in the digital community, not just so much by ads, but through like Facebook groups of like Absolutely. the neighborhoods that you want to serve. Mm -hmm. Those types of things can be, can be really, really valuable to establishing yourself as an expert in your community. And like you said, like franchises are not big businesses. I mean, you know, as a franchisor, we develop a model, but our typical franchisee uh, is somebody who lives in a community locally and they've decided that they want to serve their community by owning their own business. And what they're looking for is kind of a blueprint to have a successful business that will serve their community and not be, you know, and have a quicker track to success and mm -hmm. kind of cut out some of that failure rate that's typical when you're like in, in just a, like a straight up startup business from scratch. Absolutely. And I love that. I love the digital stuff. I mean, sometimes there's webinars. There used to be a lot more virtual networking. People are still kind of doing some of those or webinars and stuff like that. Like I love attending those whenever I can. Um, the Facebook groups love those, right? So there's so many ways to, to use all of the different ways for community. Hey there, I want to interrupt this episode with a quick message. If you're listening to this podcast episode and want to learn about branding your franchise or small business, then go to brandingbridge.com. That's branding-bridge.com. Why did you start to really create a franchise company? Like what made you say, yes, I want more, I want to have franchisees? Well, one was uh, we, I think because of my kind of serving my neighbors, we started to see the the demand and kind of people asking like, we, you know, we would really love to have a business like yours in our community. And the one thing that I knew when I wanted to grow our business was I wanted to grow our business through fellow entrepreneurs. You know, I love, I, you know, I love employees and I love everything that an awesome employee brings to the table, but you, you build a business, you know, when you're the, when you're the entrepreneur that kind of, matches what you want in life and kind of your unique purpose. And I just love working with small business owners. And so I thought, what, what a great way to grow through other individuals, small business owners working together to serve our communities, you know, hopefully across the country. That's what really drew me to the idea of franchise when we started to look at how we're really going to grow and serve more people struggling with the same problem. I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I feel like a lot of times when people go into the franchise industry, like franchisees, they're wanting some type of freedom, but kind of want to be able to have a proven concept, but want to be their own boss, right? And and, and then being involved with the community and, and making a difference, regardless of what franchise they choose. So I love it. So is there a need for your services in all areas or are there specific areas that are more, I mean, obviously there's like the golf courses and stuff, but how do you see growing the franchise? Yeah, you know, that's such a great question. So when you're thinking about growing the franchise that does wood rot repair and, and ask like, is there a need empty there? In some ways, yes, because wood rot is a fungus that exists uh, in the air. And there's really nothing we can, there's very little we can do about it. It is worse in some uh, climates than others. And so when you look across the U.S., across all climate zones, there are Five climate zones, starting with severe wood deterioration and ending with low deterioration. And so for a majority of the U.S., we exist in an intermediate. Where in Oklahoma, I'm based, uh, that's what we have. And then you have kind of what they call a high. And that would be a majority of the, of the South and some of New England. And then you have the severe and that's going to kind of go up your coast and uh, and definitely cover the Gulf Coast pretty pretty seriously. So, you know, outside of some of the really arid desert areas, you know, maybe say like uh, New Mexico or Arizona <laughs> or some of California, Nevada, pretty prevalent throughout the U.S. I've never honestly heard of something like what you're doing. So it's it intrigues me and it's interesting. I definitely think there's some growth that can happen. I mean, you hear about franchises and you hear about all these different ones and you're like, which ones are really unique and which ones are going to be sustainable long term, right? And I don't think that there's many competitors for you. Is that would you say that's accurate? No, that's definitely accurate. I mean, there are companies that like a renewal by Anderson, that's a window replacement company. And of course, they market to replace rotting wood windows and doors. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, you know, big pro push is, you know, they're kind of expensive. And yeah, I would say it's a really unique 
franchise, home service business, because there's a lot of companies that deal with rot, but they all deal with it in a replacement scenario. So if you have a rotting wood window or wood door, they replace it for a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or if you have like something else rotting, they just rebuild it or replace it. Where ours is really unique is that it's a repair only, and it's a repair with an epoxy an epoxy technology, a resin technology. And so it makes it significantly more cost effective and efficient. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, I think that's one of the places that make us so much different than, than everything else out there that's on the market. Yeah, I would agree. I love it when it's unique. Awesome. So my last question to you is if you had any advice, whether it was for like a franchisor or a franchisee that's just starting off, what advice would you give them? So the advice I'd give somebody who's looking to get in franchising, you know, regardless of whether they're interested in preserving or not, right. of course, is I, I would encourage somebody to find something that they can find some passion in. Mm. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that you can do in this world, but, you know, goodness, I mean, if we're going to work for a living, let's enjoy it. Absolutely. Uh, and let's feel like we're doing something that matters. Mm-hmm. The second thing I would tell somebody is make sure it's going to give you the the financial freedom you're looking for. I mean, there's freedom of time. Right. That, that I think you should be looking for freedom of money and then, you know, freedom of purpose. And I think it should give you some freedom of, of money. And, you know, so I would definitely encourage somebody to, to really go through their due diligence when looking at a franchise. Uh, there's a thing called the item 19. It's the financial yep. disclosure. Spend time with that mm-hmm. and try to understand the model and make sure that it's, you know, it's going to make, it's going to give you that, that, that money that's going to give you that freedom of time that you're, you're looking for. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, everybody always says item 19, like that's a given if you're looking into any franchise. Yeah. So you really need to digest that and kind of analyze it. Um, and if you don't know, ask questions, right? Like if you're going yeah. to a franchise, either if you're working with a broker or the individual itself, ask questions and, and explore the options. There's so many out there. The other thing I would too, and I know this is a little self-serving, but I'd say make sure you like the founder, right? Or, or you, like true, the, you like the leadership team. No, yeah. that's 100% true because you're going to be working with them and or relying on them for certain stuff and you have to be able to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that goes both ways, right? Like if somebody comes to you and says, oh, I want to do a franchise with you and you don't think they're a good fit for the company, you might not say that, but you're also very cautious of, okay, can you fulfill X, Y, Z? And you just have these conversations because it's got to be a fit for both of you. It's like you're you're almost coming into like a marriage essentially without, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, it's a 10 year contract. I mean, ours is a 10 year contract and that's pretty typical. So yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and if anybody wants to learn more about preserve, how can they find you? Well, they could check me out on LinkedIn. Just, just look on LinkedIn for Ty McBride. If they're not on LinkedIn, go is where you can find all about the franchise and, uh, and, you know, it's got all of our contact information and they can, they can reach out to me there. I'm, I'm pretty active in the franchise process. So eventually pretty soon they get, they get a chance to meet me and talk about the, uh, talk about the franchise, talk about the system, talk about the product. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. We'll talk to you again. Thank you everybody for listening in on today's brand clarity episode with Susie Libertor. Two things. First and foremost, please, if you liked this episode, please subscribe and leave some positive reviews. Also, don't forget to sign up for Stop Sending Your Customers to the competition and get my insider secrets to compelling branding that converts. You can find that at branding-bridge.com. It's a free workbook for you to check out right now all of the branding techniques and strategies that I use for my paying clients.